All right, it seems like most people have arrived, so we'll start the webinar. Hello and welcome to the Strings and String Tools webinar. My name is Alexander Martin. I'm an Applications Engineer at Unitronics. Joining us are also my colleagues, Daniel Logie and Michael Poles, who will answer any questions posed during the webinar. You can enter your questions in the chat or questions window. This webinar will be recorded and posted to our website. It will be hosted on YouTube. This webinar and others can be found on our website at www.unitronics.com slash support slash webinars. If you have any recommendations or requests for future webinars, you can send them to support at unitronics.com. Today we'll cover basic string information as well as some helpful example programs that create and modify strings. First we should ask what is a string? A string is a vector of operands containing ASCII characters. The length of the string will be determined by the placement of the null character, which is the first location where no other characters are stored. This signals that the string has ended and is a large basis of how we use string tools. Some practical uses for strings include sending and receiving information. You can send emails and SMS messages using ASCII strings, logging text information to data tables, creating time and date tags, and username and password permissions. Since a string is made up of ASCII characters, it is important to understand how they work. They are each defined by a specific value, which we can see displayed in decimal or hex. All of the ASCII characters are listed in red. The first 32 characters are all string commands. Common char uh, characters include the null, the start of text, end of text, carriage return, and line feed. Other regular text characters are listed starting with the space character. For instance, the character for space is decimal 32, which is located in the second column. Capital and lowercase characters have different ASCII codes which makes all strings case specific when searching for information. In column 3, as you can see, capital A is decimal 65. And lowercase a in column 4 is decimal 67. Numbers are also given a code and do not directly correspond to their given value. For instance, the character for 0 is decimal 48. This is important to know that ASCII number characters will not operate the same way as a number. Though displaying as a numeric value, if used in math functions, they will correspond only to their, to their decimal value, which is not the same as their displayed character. If you, do need to, if you do need to use these values, you will only need to do a simple conversion to use them as a true numerical value. One of the example programs we will cover will show how this is accomplished. Next is important to know how the ASCII characters are stored. Each ASCII character is defined by 8 bits of information. 8 bits is the same as 1 byte. Therefore, a memory integer being 16 bits, or 2 bytes, can contain two separate ASCII characters. A memory long at 32 bits, or 4 bytes, can contain four characters as shown. For example, if we type my name in, we can determine how many operands we need to assign for this string. If I was storing my name into MIs, I would need nine locations, MI0 to MI8. As you see, I left room for the null character at the end of the string. I do not need to enter this character, 
a completely empty byte location registers as a null, which is decimal zero, which was shown in the ASCII table. If I did not leave this blank, the blank space and um, entered another name into MI8, for example, the string would not end at my last name. It would continue into the other operands containing ASCII characters. If I was storing my name into memory longs, I would need five locations, ML0 to ML4, as shown. As you can see, I also added numeric characters, 1 and 3, to the end of my name using MLs. The null sign will be written within the last ML, and it is not required to have an entire ML or MI dedicated to this character. The null only needs to be present immediately following the last character to display and can occur within any MI or ML that contains any other characters. There are several ways to display the ASCII string information. When displaying on an HMI, you can display the strings as variables. You can display them as an ASCII string or a password string and link the start of the string operand. You can also select keypad entry if you wish to enter the information directly on the HMI. When programming and viewing in VisiLogic, within the latter, it will display as the de decimal representation of the ASCII code. Shown in MI11 is the decimal value 32, which corresponds directly to the character for an ASCII space, which I refer again in the ASCII table. Decimal 32 is the character for space. To view these ASCII string characters, you can use the Memory tab at the bottom of VisiLogic within the Output window. Make sure to have de defined the correct length, size, which is 8-bit, and format, which is ASCII. If you notice it isn't displaying property in operand or in the latter or within the Output window, it could just be how it is being viewed. I entered my name starting at MI0 and I can display the information in multiple ways. In the top row, I have it set to 8-bit ASCII, and my name is displayed as characters. If it is accidentally set on 8-bit decimal, it will display as just the ASCII character's decimal value, which we saw before in the ASCII chart. If you notice, they are out of order. What there is is the decimal representation 108 and then 65. So if we refer to that in the ASCII chart, 108 is lowercase l and 65 is capital A. This is only due to the way they are assigned to the high and low bit of each MI. If, however, I set this information to 16 or 32 bit, it will display as a large decimal value, since this changed the 8 bit values together into a 16 or 32 bit number. This concludes the PowerPoint presentation. Now I'll show you some of the example programs within VisiLogic that involve creating and modifying strings. This first example is a name and date tag combiner. What we do is we enter a name. It takes the current date and it combines them into a completed tag combining the first name and the date. I can go online to show you how this is accomplished. As 
as you see right now, the name previously entered was John Doe. It then adds the current date, incomes it into a tag involving just the first name and the date. So if I enter my name, It will take my first name and then add today's date into a completed tag. I will show you how I set this up on the HMI as well after going offline. On the HMI, I have a couple of ASCII variables linked. They are found on the left over here under ASCII string, and there's also a password string. For my variable ASCII string, I assign a start of vector. I chose MI0, and you only need to assign a start. Strings always end at the null character, so we never have to define an entire length, since it it will always read until the placement of the first null it reads. I've decided to enter 19 characters just as an arbitrary value for someone to enter their name. And for that I will need, you have to round up, so it will be a total of 20 characters. And since two characters can be assigned to one MI, I assigned 10 MIs. Starting at MI0, I also made a group so that later on I would not accidentally assign any values to these MIs and overwrite the data I wanted to display. I did this by selecting set features for a group of operands, defining the number of operands I wanted, which was 10, giving it a name, I typed in name one of ten, name one of, and then what you can do is you can insert the number, and it will automatically label the first one, MI0, name one of one, name one of ten, then name two of ten, and so forth. Uh, the string pattern is an example of how it will be displayed. It is sometimes helpful in determining vector length. And again, I've chosen 19 characters to ensure that Although I have space for 20, that I can only enter 19, and the 20th character will always be reserved for the null, which defines the end of my string. There is also a link bit for refresh. You can pulse this to refresh the ASCII string. Uh, the enhanced series controllers updates faster than the standard, but it can still be pulsed if needed to refresh faster. This can be used for all ASCII displays. For example, in the second one, I also have the exact same bit linked for that refresh. For my name, I also selected keypad entry since I want to enter a name in on the HMI, but that doesn't have to be checked if you only want to display ASCII information. The last variable I have is just the combined name and date tag. I will show you how I put this together within Visilogic in the letter. What I wanted to do first was separate the first and the last name. 
since I will be entering my name. I'll go back online for you to see how that was displayed. So I first want to separate my name Alexander. I would use this using string tools, string left. And what I did was I wanted to separate it defining based on the space character. So first what I did was I assigned the space character to a memory integer. All these string tools can be found here. I used string to ASCII. With string to ASCII, what you can do is directly type in string information, and it will assign it to a vector address. You can type in anything you would want, and it would start at MI11. I am only entering the space, assigning it to MI11. It will only assign that one byte and the other one will be left for the null. I do not want an offset, so I left that at zero. Again, when we go online, we can see that MI11 is displaying as decimal 32, which is again the ASCII character uh, for space. Then what I want is to find where is this space location within the string. Since everybody's name is not going to be the same length, I only want to have the left half of the name displayed. To do this, I use the string find, which is used for find string and string. I define the address source, which is MI0, the start of the name. It also asks for what are you looking for, the string find address. I'm looking for the space which I defined above. And I want no offset. I want to immediately start at MI0. I then output this to an MI, which gives me a space location. Going online again. We can see that MI12, the location of the space that it found, is 9. So it is 9 spaces away. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we will use this information to gather the left half of the string. To do this, I use string left left part of string. You define the start of the string, which is again MI0, and then a length, which was MI12, our space location. If we go online, we can see it is outputting the left part of the string with nine spaces to MI18. What is very handy when modifying uh, programs using strings is the memory tab at the bottom. As you can see, I have defined many of the specific operand addresses that I am viewing at the bottom. Since we are looking at string left, MI18, I have defined it down here. First name, 1 of 10. I have defined a length of 10. It is 8-bit, and I'm displaying as ASCII, and it properly displays as my first name, Alexander. I want to join this to um, a date tag. So next, what I did was use the real-time clock to ASCII, which is also located in the Strings menu.
there are many different formats you can use. You can use hour and minutes, hours, minutes, seconds, hours and minutes, AM and PM. And for these, they tell you how many MIs you will need to assign. I use the month, date, year format. Uh, this is helpful because some file names do not allow slashes, since slashes are generally used to define directories. So for this, it didn't tell me the number of MIs I had, but since there's two characters per MI, the month would take up one, the first space and the first day would take up the second, the second day and the second space would take up the third, the year would take up the fourth, and then I would need one more for the null. So for this, I have assigned five operands. and gave it the tag today's date one of five. And since I want to combine these into two, I use string, insert string to string. And what this will do was it will insert string A after string B. I did want it in the format Alexander and then the date. So I'll be inserting the date first, which we have defined as MI13. We will be adding it to the first name. We want an offset of zero. And we will finally assign that to our combined name and date tag. I will go online for one more second. You can see MI13. Displayed below is our date. I'm inserting that behind MI18, which is my first name, Alexander. I do not want any offset. And then I want to assign this to MI29. I have given MI29 a vector length of 15, just in case someone uses the full 10 MIs for their first name and then the five for the date. This ensures that I will not write this data in any other spot. And combined, it comes out Alexander 05, 15, 13. There's one more program that I will show you today that involves parsing information out of a string. For example, this string uses a known, uh, excuse me, a known format, batch number, and a space, and that says a temp, and it displays temperature info. What we would like to do is separate the left and right part of the strings, again, based upon the location of a space, and it also shows what would happen if we want to use that temperature for a formula. Right now, the numbers would be only in ASCII, but we can convert them to numerical values as well. I can go online to show you how this operates. All right, here we go. Let's make this larger so you can see it. Here it is displaying the same format, batch with a number, temp 678. But the number may not always be this. It could be uh, larger or smaller. It could just be, the temperature could be 12. The program will automatically separate the left part of the string, which is batch pound, two, three, four, five, six, and then the right part of the string, which is temperature 12. It also displays the temperature as a decimal value below. If we go offline, I configure this program similarly to the one we previously saw. I've assigned the start of the string to MI0 with a keypad entry and a maximum of 19 characters. 
I've just tried, uh, defined the string pattern below just for display purposes. It helps to determine how many operands you need to assign. And I've linked one bit for the refresh bit. The other variables are display only, so I do not have keypad entry. For the left part of the string, I have also allowed for 10, just in case. And for the right part of the string, since I know it will always be a uh, defined size, I've only assigned four operands. This will allow the temp to assign the first two, and then the numbers to assign the second two. And below, this is no longer an ASCII variable. This is a numeric variable. To show how this operates, I will then show you what I programmed within the ladder. Like before, we are defining this based upon left and right side of the string, based upon the location of a space. I've assigned the space to the operand MI210. Sorry about that. There we go. Assign the space to uh, MI200. We then need to find where within this string that is located. We are starting again at MI0, our SC string input that we had on the HMI. We are looking for MI200, which is our space, displayed as decimal 32. We have zero offset, and it's showing that the space is in location 11. Like before, we're using the left part of string to get this information. So using string left, we define that we are starting at MI0, the source of our string. We are defining that we want the first 11 characters. Batch being 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we are outputting this to MI10. I also have these defined below in my memory window. MI10 is batch 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can see if I actually have this set to decimal, then it will display as the numeric value for the ASCII characters. I'm also using string length because although it is outputting a batch number that currently is five characters long. That may not always be the case. The batch will probably likely start at batch number one and increment from there. So to assign the right side of the string, which at the moment is temperature 12, to use string right, I will need to know how many spaces from that null character I need to count over to get the right side of my string. To start, I use string length to determine the entire length of the string. which is located here, string length. String length measures all the way from the start of the vector, MI0, all the way to the null. It measures a length of 18. And what I want to do is take my string right starting at MI0, which measures all the way to the null, and then measures uh, backwards from the null to see how many characters I want. To determine this, I have taken our string length, which was defined above, 
and MI202. I take the string length and subtract the amount of space to our space character. I'll put that to an operand. And then this would give us temp 12, but it would also include the space character, which I did not want to include in the right part of string. To do this, I subtracted the value, a constant value of 1 from the string length, and I'll put it to the same operand once again. Now when I use string right, it only takes the last six characters, which is temp 12, and I'll put that to the right part of the string in MI20. This can also be viewed in online mode down here, where I've assigned MI20. Now I mentioned before that at the moment we have temp 12. What if I want to use the ASCII characters 1, 2 as an actual number for math functions? One of the ways we can do this is we can extract the information directly using string right and selecting a length of 2. But I also want to show you one of the other functions within string tools, which was remove string from string. What I want to remove are the characters capital T, E, M, and P. To do this, first I need to assign those characters to some operands. I've used the string to ASCII function again, and I have typed in capital T, since it is case specific, E, M, P. This will directly only take up two MIs, capital T and E for the first, MP for the second, but I always have to take into effect the null that needs to be there to signify that the string has ended. Therefore, I've signified that this will take up three operands, 210, 211, and 212. I then use the string tool, remove string from string. It asks for what string am I addressing. If we go back online, I'm addressing the string starting at MI20, which is displayed down here. It is temp12. What am I removing? I'm removing the string TEMP, which I defined above. It also asks how many times you want it to remove. I only want this to be removed one time. And then I'll output this to a operand MI35, which contains my temperature as an ASCII. Once we have the temperature as an ASCII, we can use the string tools, ASCII to num. It will ask for a string address source, which we defined above as our ASCII temperature. I had defined several different operands if the temperature was longer than a couple of characters. And using ASCII to num, it also wants to know the length. For this, again, I use the tool string length. and measure the length of our ASCII temperature. Our length in this case was only 2. But if I change this, for example, if I change it to say temp 4, 5, 6, our length becomes 3. This is important using ASCII to num since it asks for length. I want to convert those three characters to an actual value. I'm outputting this to MI40, which you can see this is playing as 456. This is now actually a number that we can use. 
for math or formulas within the logic. So before, I had my temperature displaying an MI35 as an ASCII. And if we actually switch it, we can see in decimal it is represented <coughs> excuse me, by the ASCII codes. But now that we've assigned it to MI40, it is properly within the decimal value, and we can use it for math functions. This concludes the presentation of strings and string tools in our example programs. I hope you have found the information helpful. Thank you all for joining us. At this point, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.